Chapter 27. Do I contradict myself? Very well, then, I contradicted myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. Walt Whitman. Okay, you got us here. Now what? Klebo was agitated, and so was the rest of the team. But no one was more agitated than House, who had suggested the symphony true. What had he been thinking? He had 14 days to pull together some sort of strategy for beating the red bugs that would include girls in dresses made of crepe paper toting magic wands made from rolls of wrapping paper. There was not enough time to order uniforms and have them delivered, but there would be matching t-shirts, starched and ironed by the sunshine laundry. What's your brilliant plan, house? Klebo postured. Your mama got you here, not me, said House. And you're not playing. What are you talking about? demanded Klebo. You quit, remember? Go help Francis. That's where your mama wants you anyway. I'm playing ball, and you can't stop me. Remember what you said when you ruined it for the whole team? Anybody can play. Well, I'm anybody. You're nobody, said House. Wilkie, gather em up. Finesse was at the far end of right field, near the Methodist Cemetery, surrounded by children who were singing Aurora of the I Sing, a composition Finesse had made up that morning. They sounded like dying monkeys. Melba was waving her clipboard and trying to direct the singing while Finesse tried out a new interpretive dance. What are we going to do with these kids? asked Wilkie. I can throw said the shortest kid. His name was Billy. See? He picked up a rock, threw it overhand, and hit Klebo in the shin. Hey! Klebo took off running after Billy, who screamed away toward town, his short legs pumping up and down like little pistons. The Tolbert twins, Ned and Boone, trudged into the outfield with girls following them. Start off playing catch with them, said House. They don't have gloves, yelled Ned. I can hit, said little Jimmy Scott at home plate. He grabbed the wooden bat and gave it a walloping once around. He hit the backstop with it and nearly knocked himself out. Are you okay? called House from the pitcher's mound. So far he hadn't thrown one pitch. The bat's cracked, called Evan Evans from home plate. And that was the good part of practice. Forget this, yelled Wilkie. A lot of good it did for you to come up with this harebrained idea, House. We're never going to be able to play baseball, much less lick them red bugs. We might as well hang it up. Wilkie trotted to the edge of center field and stood there with his arms crossed, like a little angry island onto himself. Tuttis littered the far reaches of centered field. House wrestled with his doubts. He had insisted they do it this way. But now it made no sense. The boys were right. He'd understood it so clearly the day before. He'd seen it. He'd seen the connections. He'd seen the symphony true. But now, now that he had gotten what he had asked for, that symphony eluded him. Listen for the symphony true, House. He'd laid across the bed the night before with leaves of grass. He'd inspected it. Had Klebo heard it? No. Good. He hated that Klebo had touched this treasure that had belonged to his mother. He hated that Klebo would make fun of it, of him, of Mr. Norwood Boyd. He hated Klebo, period. Thanks to Klebo, the other kids were looking at him funny. They didn't say anything. They didn't dare yet. But he could tell they were wondering. Today's newspaper carried Phoebe Tolbert's article. House had read it. Every kid in Aurora County had heard about it by now, but no one said a word to him. House's mother was Norwood Boyd's goddaughter, and he, House, hadn't even known it. Questions. He had questions now, and they buzzed in his mind like a nest full of angry hornets. Klebo came back kicking at the dirt as he approached the field. Billy didn't come back with him. I'm catching, spit Klebo. You can't stop me. Watch me, said House. I will, said Klebo. He stood by home plate, arms crossed, fuming. House! 
Honey came with Ruby across the field. She carried a small basket of eggs, wrapped in a tea towel. She hugged her brother. I spent the night with Ruby. I know, said House, patting his sister twice on the head. Honey, we're practicing here. Chicken feathers decorated Eudora's tutu. She plopped herself down on top of home plate and across one of Clebo's shoes. Clebo's frustration leaked out like a water bucket with holes in it. He marched toward the pitcher's mound. You said you'd figure this out, he shouted. He waved his arms up and down. Look what you done. The field was crowded with kids now. House threw a bean ball at Clebo, and Clebo ducked just in time. Hey! Morale was low, but no one was lower than House. He had already missed last year's game. Now he'd miss this year's too, because this game wouldn't be a game. Honey led Yodora to the third base line, where she squatted and sh showed her the eggs in the basket. Your new brothers and sisters, she whispered. Eudora wagged her tail and sniffed at the basket. Three ballerinas came to the plate. We were sent here by Finesse for batting practice, they sang. Sandy Koufax never had to pitch to ten-year-old girls in tutus and glitter shoes. You're supposed to send three ball players to Finesse. What do we do now, asked Boone. Clebo parked himself on the All-Stars bench. We play, said Ruby. She had two gloves slung over her bat, and her own ball bulging out of the front overall's pocket. She wore her catcher's knee pads. She wriggled her catcher's mitt off of her bat, pulled the baseball from her pocket, threw it to House smartly, and crouched at home plate. Come on, House, she said. Let's see the fastball. Step out of the box, House directed the ballerinas, who obeyed. House did a full, high-kicking Koufax wind-up followed by a long forward stretch toward the plate. He got good, underspin on the fastball, and zipped it across the plate. Strike, called Ruby. Again! House wound up to throw again, and again, it was all clangor. This mess he was in. He'd lost whatever thread he thought he'd found. The more he thought about it, the angrier he became, and the harder he threw. His cap popped off. He threw harder. Watch out, shouted Ruby. You're going to throw your arm out. House threw a blazing fastball. And another. Kids gathered to watch. Finesse came with them. Over and over, House threw in a kind of frantic ballet of one fluid motion from wind-up to delivery. Ruby hunkered down and caught every pitch that burned into her mitt. She was that good. Slow it down, she murmured, but House wasn't listening to anybody but his disappointment. He didn't listen to his elbow either, as it began to burn a warning. Faster and harder, he pitched. Kids murmured in awe and appreciation, but Clebo knew better. Step away, he shouted to Ruby. House threw another fastball. Something in his elbow twanged like a tight guitar string. Ruby held on to the pitch instead of throwing it back. House plucked a ball from the bucket by the mound and wound up for another pitch. Stop! Clebo yelled. He rushed to the mound. House threw a wild pitch. It slammed against the backstop and jiggled the chain like link like it was broken glass. At that instant, he threw. Something in House's arm gave out with a rip. House grimaced in pain as he fell to one knee. He cradled his left elbow in his glove right hand. Clebo reached the mound and grabbed his friend. Back off, Clebo! House shoved him away with his good arm. His left arm was on fire. A sob choked him. Oh, no! cried the pageant kids. House! shouted the ball players. Oh, mon dieu! whispered Finesse. All of you! shouted House. Back off!